Alrighty, today I'm going to cover uh, uh, designing a 3D our part for 3D printing project and uh, some of the concerns on designing the part and how to use FreeCAD to de design the part. I am not an expert at FreeCAD. I probably know maybe less than 1% of the whole capabilities of it, but I know enough how to design some parts and I've, I've been designing parts <coughs> and printing them in the 3D printer. So uh, uh, as an example, let me uh, open up a file. This one is kind of complicated. Yeah, so here's a part that I designed in FreeCAD and uh, I used uh, a method to uh, um, using meshes and basically creating objects and then subtracting uh, out and so this part here if uh, is actually holds a little uh, uh, Arduino Nano and we'll actually look so here's the actual part printed print it out. Um, you can see that the uh, Arduino Nano fits right in there and uh, comes right out. So there's the actual part as it's printed out. So there's a couple things you have to be able to do to be able to design your parts and one of them is have accurate measurements or at least consistent measurements and so I recommend getting something like this. It's a digital caliper and uh, you can measure things the outside diameter, inside diameter. There's a little plunge on the end so you can measure the depth of things and you get a nice uh, digital readout. You can switch from inches to millimeters. Uh, for 3D printing I use millimeters just because simple numbers and I don't have to do uh, conversions and stuff and quarter inches is a three eighths or even the decimals so yeah get one of these um, you can get a cheap one like this for just a few bucks so check online for that and uh, so need good measurements um, Well, that's the main thing, good measurements to start with. But anyway, let's get back to FreeCAD. So when you start FreeCAD, you start off with this page. And then you can you can move your mouse around. If you haven't followed anything, you just, oh, getting started. That probably won't be where I want to start, but it's not. You go, part design. That looks good. I'm not building a building. I'm not building a ship. Um, so... Let's go part design. And then you look at this and you're like, there's nothing there. And what do we do with all this stuff? Well, I don't use this. I have used this. You create a scratch. Basically, the idea here is you, you draw out your uh, design and then you have to extract it or pad it. Um, I think they call it padding. Is it padding? You have to map it to a face, extra, extra, extrude it. Um, so, first thing I do is get out of part design and go into part. Now, another thing I do, <coughs> I would go in and go into preferences and we're going to go into the display colors and we're going to pick a simple color. This color gradient is kind of neat, but when you have blue lettering on a bluish background, it Becomes a little difficult to read, so um, I'm going to change that to something lighter, simple color. Hopefully that'll do. If not, because <clears throat> some some things are going to be gray, some things are going to be uh, blue. Um, so, so what's the deal about this um, part as opposed to part design? Well, part design is the one where you have to do the drawing. This one you can use objects. 
So if we wanted to create a uh, something cylindrical, well, bam, we got a cylinder. Of course, that looks like a circle because the view we're looking at. Right now, we're looking at it, I think, from above. So if we look at it from the side, we can say, oh, that's more cylindrical looking. But then there's this, uh, um, it's the three-quarter view. Or not three-quarter, the angle view. So you can see the whole thing. Now, if you go under Model and then click on the object, you're going to find out that, oh, that's cool. But we get all this information, which for our points doesn't matter. We're interested in the data. There we can have a, ra a radius and we have a height. Now, one of the key things when designing using these parts is say, okay, I got the cylinder. I want it to be a radius of 12. Now I can't see it, so use the mouse wheel and scroll out. Okay, so now I have a cylinder, but not for to print that. That's really a nice cylinder. But <coughs> this is where we add another cylinder in. And now we have another cylinder in the middle of that. And so we highlight that one. And say, oh, that's radius of two. Well, let's make this one radius of, oops. Get the number, it changes the view. So I can select that. Bam. Let me get you out of the way. Okay. So now what we could do is say, take this object, the cylinder, and then the second cylinder, hitting here, with the control, and then come over here. We now have these available. So we can subtract one from the other. So click that. We now have a cylinder with a hole in it. But let's say we didn't want a hole, we want it to be more like a cap or something. What we can do is go ahead and delete the cut, come into the cylinder, which is the center one, the second one we add it, and we can go into placement. And let's say we want the end of this to be three millimeters. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shift this to three millimeters in the Z axis, up and down. So up and down. Down here you have the, oh, I can't see that because I'm in the way. Down here you have the X, Y, and Z to show which direction is which. So Z, Z in our case here is up. So we just move this up three um, <coughs> millimeters. So now if we were to, um, oh, we have to, okay. And now we click, I think this is how it works. Click this cylinder, the first cylinder, and then I'll go on the control, click the second one. Then we'll cut it. You could union it, but at this point I, I want to have something more like a cap. So we'll go ahead and make a cut. And you'll see now we have a bottom. So if we look at it from the top and move it around, you see we now have a nice cut. <coughs> And this is basically how I design my uh, um, parts. You, you can click on things like this and then say, okay, I want, I want to camper it, camper, and then we'll say, okay. And then you can add a, you know, a camper. So, and then if we want it to have this be more of a, um, Now that's curved there, so that's a fillet. So we just curve that. So you can make fairly quick, you can make design parts fairly quick <coughs> if you have your sizes and everything ready. And so I'm, now I'm going to cover, uh, <coughs> actually design a part. Well, some things to consider when designing parts. <coughs> Let me uh, get this out. So this is uh, the first thing I really designed and printed is the idea is to have a, um, I have multiple glasses and stuff. So this is my glassware. 
אחוז ה... של ה... של ה... של ה... Task or whatever, and I hold the glasses like that, so you don't have to keep opening and closing them and stuff like that. And they're not just lying. Around. But if you were to print this or try to design this in one piece, you have this area here, which is overhang. Now, this is, when I this is like one of the first parts I designed because you have to think in 3D um, design when you're printing that anything that has a 90 degree cut like that. If you're going off at a 45 degree angle, you might be able to get away with it. But there's going to be a point where the nozzle from the 3D printer is just going to shoot straight down. It's not going to have anything to connect to because it's not going to be close enough or above it. So it's not going to build on it. It's just going to shoot. So if I were to put this into a slicer like Cura, it would build a... Um, support structure, which then I'd have to manually remove and it would be a mess. But if you think upside down and then you think in parts, this comes off and I could print it this way. So now printing it this way, there's no overhang. There's zero overhang. Um, and then I print it this as a separate part. Now what I Going, looking back, I would not design it this way then, because what happened is this area here, as turns out, is very flimsy, because there's really only one layer of plastic really holding that together. It's not, it's not solid. So, what I would do in the future, you know, if I were to redesign this, is instead of having this print with the base, I'd make the base separate. Probably put in something like this just the center part as as the base and then just print this separately or even design this so that I could just instead of printing all this out just design it to use a pencil and then then I put a cap on boom boom I could have a uh, fairly easy part design that way now another concern when you're designing parts is that you know if you look at this this fairly snug not perfect but you know it's not flying around what I did to figure it out because you're going to have um, slight changes when with the temperatures and the size and everything in your printer and stuff like that so what I did is I uh, I printed off test pieces so I designed the connection and I said oh that was way too flimsy and so I printed off another one where I could put the part on and it's a little snug and you know that way you can instead of printing whatever it was 12 hours or 10 hours or whatever maybe it's only seven hours i don't know whatever instead of waiting hours and hours and hours and hours to find out that oops that doesn't fit yeah you get you know 25 30 minutes maybe 40 and you've got a part that you can test and you can print you know obviously multiple at the same time and then say hey, which one works best so prototype now um what am i doing today i i need to print um some angle brackets to mount something on the wall sitting right here Oof. this is a three quarter by three quarter piece of molding, X um, outside molding. And what I plan on doing is take this and line it with LED strip lighting. And I've already printed uh, end caps. So I can put a little end cap on my foot. My phone's getting in the way. I got end caps printed, and um, I this was a primer piece of molding, so I just painted some white la um, latex paint on it. But now I want something to be able to grip, well, which would be at an angle, so um, so I'll create an angle, and then a piece that will come down. 
and I'm going to use these command strips, cm, uh, and uh, use those to attach four brackets. But now I have to design the bracket that will hold this piece to the wall. So, uh, first thing I'm going to have to do is these command strips. Just grab one of them and do my measurements. So, my caliper, and what do we got here? About 15.5, so it's got to be minimum of 15.5, so let's say it. Uh, safety make it 18 18 wide <laughs> so let me bring up the thing and we'll go left command strip is 18 millimeter meter and then the length with these command strips you need to expose this bottom part here now what they usually get around with is have the piece they have two pieces um, that you uh, mount one piece to the wall and then you put the other piece on top of it and the other piece that goes on top of it would cover this I'm not concerned about that because I'm looking more for functionality so I'll go ahead and ex expose this so Basically, I'm looking at starting right there to up to the top. Now, there's a wall side and a um, bracket side, or whatever you want to call it. So, but they're both the same length. So, I just need to get this length. So, it's 1.8 and we'll call that um, 52 um, okay um, so we'll clear that up we don't need this piece anymore the new part switch it this way and so one of the concerns I have is that if I tried to print this bracket flat it will have an overhang uh, and that's not ideal and if I try to print it you know oh the flip that over it's still gonna have an overhang but if I print it on edge I should be okay to uh, um, print it on edge and not have any overhang. So that's what I'm going to try to do. So to do that, I'm going to start off with a, I just clicked on the uh, cube. So let's check over the model and I'm more interested in data than anything else. So, so um, yeah, we're going to need... Uh, I'm going to need the uh, measurement for the side millimeters. And 19, we'll call it uh, 20 because I want it to go outside of that. So, um, do that. We'll call it three millimeter. It's three quarter inch, but we'll call it twenty. Um, so, so really, I've got a fifty-two and twenty. So we're looking at seventy-two. So I'm going to want to have this. Let's okay. Height is going to be actually width. So we have to think about that differently. So one of these I need to be fifty-two or seventy-two. So. In the way I think, I don't want that. I want the length. We'll do it this way. Just 
because I prefer thinking this way. So now we have part. Um, that's going to be the overall length um, or height once it's on the wall. But so then we need. Actually, we'll probably need more than seventy two. So we're going to have to have some. We're going to have to have the fifty two plus. 20 plus the width. You know, I can include the width. So that shouldn't be a problem. So we should be good with it. So if we look at it from an angle, we now have something that looks like that. Now the width, we went over and decided that that's going to be 18 millimeters. So we can come in here and change this to 18. Which really becomes our height. That's, that should be our height, not our width. Oops. Okay, now width-wise is how deep I'm going to have to make this 20, let's make it 20, 25, we'll see what it looks like, let's get me out of the way, so now I have this is 18, this is 25. But really? Yeah, okay. Now I have to decide which side of this is going to be the part that goes against the wall. Press my mirror, because we're gonna we're gonna cut away and then cut away. So I'm going to need another cube. And and I'll make this one 25 so that we can see it. And this should be 20 um, by 20. So now I should be able to, this will be the part that goes where the uh, angle uh, corner molding goes. So what we'll do is we'll grab that one. Add this one and then we will cut it. So now we have that angle. So now I have to cut an angle this way. So add another one. Um, go ahead and move this one. Um, move it on X. So we'll move X. Twenty-four. Yeah. And we'll want to do Y. Um, so I don't want to create a weak spot here. So I'm going to probably fill it that. But let's go ahead and move the Y over five. And make this 25. Oop, we didn't want to move that 25. It's not size enough. So we really only want to move that and 5. Apply. Of course, we can't see it now, so we'll change the height to 25. Now I can see it. So, what I need to do is I need to make this <laughs> block extend out both sides so that I can cut it away and then I'll have my bracket there. So we'll make this 20 and we'll make this what was it 50? Probably less than 50. Yeah, because we used up part of our 
So right here we should have 52. And now we can go ahead and make a cut here. And cut those parts out. Ah. Not good. So we'll have to uncut that. Go ahead and delete. And then I need to drop this uh, down. I moved it. Yeah, let's move one millimeter along with like that. Here we are. Actually, let's drop that negative one. Make sure it goes through the part. And now I can do just control click, control click, and then make the cut. So now I have a nice little angle. This part here, I'm probably going to hot glue onto the molding, and then this is the part that's going to take the uh, adhesive strip. But we have this part here could potentially be a um, problem. Let's move this around and see if we can get a good angle. One of the problems is I don't know how to rotate this We want to get that right there, that line. Can't quite. No, it's had to show me the other angle I could do that, but. Hmm. Oh, wait. I don't really know which edge it is. I don't know which edge it is. Okay, so it's one of those edges. You see that one disappears and if we only have one left then that has to be the one going down there has to be the one so we go ahead and fill it and then now we have a curve there so now moving it around we can see there we go I'm not sure if that's How large I want it to be. I still think that might be part of wiki, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Go ahead and I'm going to add the add a part. Okay, I'm going to add a key. And I'm going to add a cube, join these together, and then I'm going to take a cylinder and cut away so that I get a bigger fillet. There's probably another way to do that, but that's what I have an idea. So that's, that should be fine. Oops. Go ahead and make height two. Placement and move it twenty so point five and four. Make sure it doesn't crack from above. Yeah, gotta move that. So that works. So twenty two. Okay, and let's go back here, control, control, whoops, I don't want that to be tall like 
going to bring it up twenty. Oh, that's right, we're 18, right? 18, there we go. Oops, actually I'm going to use your measurements. Okay, so look at that. I'll click on this part, control, click on that part, and we'll do a union. Now we should have it should all be one part. Because it could have just used two cutaways. And now I'll add in my cylinder. Make that height of oops, 18. And a radius of. Millimeters. No, we need the radius of 4.5. Heck. So, all right, now we have to move it. My and The radius about six, and then I'll have to move this because I want what I want to do is I want to cut away everything that is not that, so I have to move it again. Move it green, and it's still not green. Still have these this part here and here. It's not ideal. Actually, bump up. I just need to bump up the uh, radius. Let's bump up the radius to. Now we can move it. There we go. Now we got it nailing it right there, nailing it right there. So if we take this part, this part. Oops. Ah. Man, this is one of those things that does it. 
Why did you hide? The undo thing here. Oops. Actually, no, that thing right there. Now I can work out how this works. Yeah, sometimes the undo doesn't undo what you think it's going to do. So now I have to go back and put the uh, placement of this back in because I canceled out of it. I don't remember what it was. Three, 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 two, two, maybe. We'll go 13. So we need to click this part, and then this part, and cut. Ooh, that's not good. Oh. Why do we do that? Huh. Delete. Because, oh, okay. Keep forgetting to hit the apply. So this was 13. Thirty-two. Apply. There we go. Okay. And now we can take this part and this part and cut it. So now we should have nice. That should make it less stress there because this is gonna it's, it shouldn't be a lot of stress but i just by adding that that should create a better disbursement i guess i don't know i'm not an engineer but and so the only thing now is now if i take it edge and That that didn't work the way I want. Let's uh cancel Yeah, that's not cool. Probably need to go back to the part that actually matters and then but should be able to do this edge. There we go. Do this edge. There's only one edge selected. Yeah, there's that. So, not the prettiest thing, but again, it's more function over form. But you know, I'll print this all in white. So, one thing I will have to figure out is how to get this to rotate in space so I can actually view it. But um, so, once you got it to this point, you're probably not say so we'll call this uh, bracket and to get it ready to print uh, on a 3d printer you have to um, do an export oh oh yeah you know you have to click that object that selects everything, not that one, but and this one is camper, but it selects the whole object, then you can export. So then you export, and here I ask export it as a mesh format, and I will give it a name. Planner, molten, bracket. 
one. And that should be going over to you in my there. And just to show, because I don't have Cura loaded on here, but uh, just to show what the part will look like, I think we'll bring that into Blender. You can also design parts and stuff in Blender, but um, this I prefer using uh, FreeCAD because uh, it's it's not any more intuitive. Because here's the Blender interface, but delete that. Go ahead and open. And now I have to oh, not Blender file. I have to import. There's the import and STL file, and moving, import, there, there it is, way out here, it's huge, mongoid, probably because I think by default Blender treats it as a uh, meters, so instead of millimeters, this is a ginormous, now think of it as a building size of a building but that's what the part will look like so you can take a look at it and say huh cool it's like like it's meant to be like that and hopefully when i print this out it actually uh um prints correctly and works but so that's uh that's what it took to make that part so that's free kid. And that's how I do it. Is there a better way to do it? Probably. Do I know how to do that? No. But hey, I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to do different things though. But this is this is how I um, just build the part by you know either taking away or adding stuff. So and the key thing is to go under part and use the mesh objects and then your uh, new new. You know, I, I think I showed if you get a size or something, you can always grab these little uh, uh, things. So, I guess we'll call that done. I'll go ahead and print it. It's not going to be in this. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I may uh, add what it looks like later. So, thanks. Catch you later.